Hello everyone, my name is Afonso Jr. and I'm a mechanical ma engineering master student in UTFPR. And I'm here to present my article entitled Experimental Phase Equilibrium of Sulfur Exofluoride and Mineral Oil. I am the main author of this article and I'm being directly advised by Drs. Moisés Marcelino Neto and Rigoberto Morales. My presentation will start with a brief introduction about the main motives of this present research. Later on, I'll be presenting the experimental apparatus and methodology used for the experimental data acquired. And at last, I'll be presenting the results and my conclusions of my work. It is known that gas-liquid two-phase flow occurs in several industrial applications, and the oil industry is one of them. Researchers all around the globe are developing distinct models in order to predict these flows patterns in pipelines, and consecutively, enhance the oil extraction effectiveness. It is also known that the flow patterns could vary depending on the operational conditions, the geometrical conditions of the flow, and also the thermodynamic conditions, that means the physical properties of the mixture being extracted. Due to the high concentrations of carbon dioxide found in pre-salt reservoirs, the thermodynamic conditions high pressure and temperature approximate the mixture being extracted to its critical condition. In this condition, it turns to being hard to distinct two phases presented, approximating their densities what affects directly the flow patterns in the pipelines. In order to understand this two-phase critical flow, a project was developed between the Petrobras Group and the New Wayne Laboratory in UTFPR. But to reproduce these conditions, it would require an extreme high pressure loop, what would bring a great amount of energy needed and some unsafe settings of operations. Therefore, a new model mixture was proposed to reproduce such, con such critical behavior and under lower pressure conditions. That would be composed by a high density gas and a low density liquid. So, for the gaseous phase, it was selected the SF6, sulfur hexafluoride, and for the liquid phase, it was selected the mineral oil Lubrax Hydra XP32. In order to understand the mixture behavior, first, it was important to evaluate its solubility behavior and thermodynamic properties. Therefore, the main goal of this research was to determine phase equilibrium data of mineral oil Hydra XP32 with SF6, at temperatures varying between 10 to 35 degrees Celsius, close to the ambient conditions, under different mixture mass concentrations, from 5 to 25% of SF6. For such, it was used three different techniques, the visual one, the PV diagram one, and the ultrasonic technique, something that was never done before. For the progress of this research, a new experimental apparatus was projected and developed in order to evaluate the thermodynamic behavior of the mixture. It was built of a high-pressure variable volume cell made out of stainless steel 316L, directly connected to a complex experimental apparatus. The system uses a syringe pump to feed the cell with SF6. A stainless steel piston is used and pneumatically connected to another syringe pump used to control the volume and the pressure during the, of the mixture during the, during the experiment. The second pump is fed with an incompressible fluid, making it possible to create a correlation between the volume inside the cell and the volume inside the pump. A magnetic stirrer, stir, is used to promote motion inside the cell for faster equilibrium achievement. A thermostatic bath is used to control the temperature of the cell as well as the temperature of the SF6 syringe pump. The bath fluid circulates on the walls of the equilibrium cell through 16 connectors installed throughout the front and the back face of the cell. For the ultrasonic measurements of the phase change, an acoustic signal is provided by a pulse generated and fed into the cell via a, con a contact ultrasonic transducer of 1 MHz. 
a second identical transducer monitors the signal at the other side of the cell. The resulting signal is amplified and displayed on a PXI computer. The temperatures were measured by using a RTD PT100 direct and intrusively in contact with the mixture. Pressure measurements were carried out using a pressure transducer connected to the interior of the cell. One endoscope camera was used to enlighten and capture images of the mixture inside the cell. Mixture bubble points were measured for five different con concentrations, varying from 5 to 20% of SF6, and under six different temperatures, varying from 10 to 35 degrees Celsius. For so, three different techniques were used in order to evaluate the bubble pressure for each experiment. The visual technique, the PV diagram technique, and the ultrasonic technique. The synthetic method was the one selected for the experiments. It would start with a mixture preparation on its monophasic liquid form, or, in case of the partial miscibility of the mixture, two-phase liquid-liquid form on the temperature and pressure predetermined. Later on, the pressure would be dropped until the start of a formation of a gaseous phase, what would indicate the bubble point of the mixture. After this bubble point acquisition, the pressure would be increased once again, and, later on, more SF6 would be introduced inside the cell in order to change its global composition. Once again, the pressure would be dropped until the bubble point of the mixture was detected. The procedure would be repeated time and time again in order to create a whole bubble line for a PX diagram. The bubble points were detected by using three different techniques. The visual technique, where the bubble was detected by visualizing a bubble formation or a turbidity inside the cell. The PV diagram technique, where the bubble pressure was indicated by the discontinuity found on the pressure volume curve. And the ultrasonic technique, where the bubble formation would be detected by evaluating the exact time of the medium acoustic energy drop, differently than expected from the commercial software simulations, the system showed a large miscibility gap. In the left side of your screen, you can see the PX diagram predicted by the commercial thermodynamic software MultiFlash, which anticipated a complete miscibility of the mixture. Such behavior was not found in the reality, as you can see in the image on the right side of your screen where you can identify two liquid phases, one of them rich in mineral oil, the upper phase, and the other rich in liquid SF6, the lower phase. The main goal of this research was to identify the phase transactions. All the points obtained throughout the experiments were ELLV points, that means, visually, the phase transactions would start with a liquid-liquid equilibrium. As the pressure drops, it was possible to see the formation of a protuberance on the liquid phase reaching SF6 at the back side of the cell. Later on, a bubble release could be noticed from this protuberance of the interior phase reaching SF6, but would now indicate the bubble point of the mixture. On the last picture, you can see the last bubble being formed, what would indicate the phase change ending. The abrupt phase change rapidly increased the mixture volume during the gaseous phase formation. Before the phase change, during the liquid phase decom decompression, great variations on the pressure of the mixture caused small variations in the volume due to the presence of two incompressible fluids inside the cell. After the formation of a gaseous phase, it could be seen that big variations on the volume started to cause slight variations on the pressure. This discontinuity of the curve could be used to identify the bubble pressure of the mixture. Acoustically, measuring the medium acoustic energy of the signals emitted over the time of experiment, the moment of the phase change could be determined by its significant drop due to gaseous phase detection.
A PX diagram could be built with all points obtained experimentally. For all three different techniques, it was selected the highest pressure evaluated, meaning the first detection of the phase change for the diagrams developed in this research. It could be noticed that, as expected, increasing the temperature of the mixture, its bubble pressure would also increase. And also, Due to the partial miscibility between the components, the bubble pressure almost didn't change for all concentrations. Lower concentrations could not be studied due to experimental apparatus limitations. A three-region phase diagram could be schematically plotted in order to explain the phase behavior of the binary system. There, you can see a liquid-lick region for high pressures and concentrations, a liquid-liquid vapor transaction over the line draw over the bubble points experimentally plotted, a vapor-liquid region for low pressures and high concentrations where the high-density loop would have to work, and also a liquid monophasic region with low concentrations of SF6 where it could be totally dissolved in the mineral oil. For the conclusions of the present work, it could be seen that PX data at temperatures varying from 10 to 35 degrees Celsius for the system sulfur hexafluoride and mineral oil were obtained. The measured data show good agreement with the experimental gas solubility data available from literature. Three different techniques could be compared to identify the phase change. And at last, it was also possible to evaluate the maximum pressures of work for the high-density loop of mineral oil and SF6 being developed in the Nguyen laboratory in order to maintain the system in the two-phase flow, liquid gas, as it could be seen in the table presented before. Thank you.